and say, how does, uh, how does Nicky and Miles feel about some two-down autos? That's what happens when you go against a lab putter, I guess. I was going to say, you I probably mean, won't call to pick out a different putter to putt. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, if, if Caleb's putting for birdie, we're fine. It's the 20 <laughs> footers for par that are – that. Uh, it's just wearing me out. Uh, yeah, mean, those uh, those par putts are just as important as the birdie putts because you make whatever a, you're doing on those par putts, <laughs> you need to learn how to mentally lock in. Because if you make that par putt, that's a momentum saver. Just Nikki was reeling. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I mean, uh, there ain't nothing you can do. Welcome back to episode 27 of Logger at Golf Podcast. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in. To it this morning with the uh, drama coming out of the Corn Ferry and Q School player getting suspended for sports betting. Um, I don't know if you guys read into it, but did you see the event that he bet on? I said I didn't read into it much, but he bet on as a PJ Tour event a couple years ago, right? So he bet on the match versus Brooks Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau. It was a twenty-five dollar wager. Wow! And How is that a PJ? That's not a PJ Tour event, correct? And did they get world ranking points for that? Nope. Like. So that was the first thing he bet on, um, or that was the second thing he bet on. In 2021, he placed a $27 bet on someone to make a birdie Yeah, on a tour that he wasn't a part of at the time. I was going to say, and what, what was his status at the time of these, uh, these he events? Techni- he technically doesn't have status. Right. Yeah, at the time He's that he placed... Inspiring. Yeah, at the time he yeah. placed his first bet in 2021, he did not have any contemporary or full status. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think I think to me the the answer for this is pretty obvious. If you're, you should not be betting on an event you're playing in, and and maybe you extend that to you shouldn't bet on anything if you're a PGA Tour player, any PGA Tour event, because at that point you could say it's something you're, you're part of the rankings of and stuff like that. But if you're a Corn Ferry Tour player and you're betting on a PGA Tour event or the match, who gives it? I mean, who cares? Like, what what effect does that have on you and your in in the tournament you're playing in. Technically, betting never has an effect on it. it if it's truly right, right. by chance, if these if these matches aren't rigged, why do they care who's betting and who isn't betting? Have they got some inside information? That's what I'm saying. So it's like uh, you're always going to be – technically, if it's on chance. I mean, but it clearly states, like, if you show up to a, a, a corn fair event, like, you qualify. You have yeah. to go through essentially a seminar explaining these are the rules, things like that, and and, – and, to the defense of the PJ Tour for suspending him, right? It clearly states you are not allowed to gamble at all. Yeah, I mean, that's always been a kind of written rule. Yeah, yeah the policy is called the integrity policy. Yeah. Yeah, so... The Pete I, Rose rule. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel bad for him, but... At the same time, it, it, you know... At the same time, 100... I mean... what Now, what is his penalty or suspension? Um, let's see here. It's a year. He's suspended for one year. Yeah, yeah, because the all four bets combined total. But like up he doesn't have status. So that's my kind of thing. It's like he doesn't have status. So what? So essentially, like he just can't Monday qualify and play in an event. Right. He couldn't. He wouldn't be able to sign up for Q School. Or I mean, I'm sure he probably already signed up for Q School. Yeah. And I'm sure they already kept his money. Oh yeah. Yeah, He's right probably now, not getting that back. Right no. now, it just says that he might not have a chance to play in Q school again. Why he's in his peak uh, performance is what he said in the interview. Yeah, I mean that, which that sucks. That does suck because you do everything to prepare for Q school, right? I mean, we know a few people here locally that just either just did first or second stage, and then you know first stage, and you're doing everything possible to just get hot one one week at a time. But on the same token, in 2021s when the bets were made, and he's going through it right now. Well, let's say, why did it take so two years relevant, to figure this, this out? Yeah. And I think the reason why it's such a hot topic is just with all this sports bet, like you got Paige Sparenak, who's <laughs> like the quote-unquote biggest golf influencer. All she does is advertise sports betting. And now in uh, TPC Scottsdale for the Waste Management Open, Barstool Sports is bi- uh, building the largest live betting sports bet complex at DPC. I mean, well, it, I mean, every every you bring you bring up a good point, Kyle, because that was going to be my kind of thing. On Golf Channel before the tournament, they talk about odds. I was going to say, well, and the thing about it, like, every broadcast you watch of golf, there's commercials for these types of betting agencies, right? Yep. I mean, it's like why, and especially with how easy DraftKings is and. Um, anything like that 
if if the powers that are making the money on the PJ Tour are wanting you to bet and gamble, right? You can't. And they're getting compensation for it. Getting compensation for it. Like, if you're a player and you're not in that event, why wouldn't you be able to bet? Like, I just don't get it. It makes no sense. Either have gambling or don't. Right. I mean, it's super simple. I think if it's truly not rigged, you shouldn't be worried about it because it's all chance. Well, I mean, at the same time, if you're betting on an event you're playing in, you could theoretically throw, throw your performance or whatever, you know. That but would be very dumb. They stand the chances of making a lot more money by playing well than, than, <laughs> yeah. than the $25 bet they made on that. On that's it. what I'm saying. But, like, and, and that's a thing. And obviously, we're, we're not going to have a Pete Rose situation, which that can be like, that can still be argued right now. <laughs> right. I mean, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but it's. Either you need to allow it or you don't. Well, they allowed Phil Mickelson to do it for 22 years with no penalty. Yeah, now, so I was just thinking, I mean, he's rumors are he's bet near a mil, or a billion dollars in bets, right? Yep. He's had to bet gambled on golf at some point or another. I mean, he gambles in all of his practice rounds. I mean, honestly, if like, like I said, golf is probably the pure sport when it comes to anybody can win each week. I mean, it, it's not like the NFL where you can argue right now that it that it's it, it's rigged, that there's a script. Golf, you never hear there's a script. Well, it's like even kind of, you know, kind of like you said the other day. You know, it's, you don't feel like the best best player always wins. True. You know, it it is a very open sport. Anybody can win at any time, especially in that that top level. Either allow gambling or don't allow the players to gamble, or don't allow them. Yeah. like, or Pretty don't soon. allow anybody to gamble on yeah. golf. Ah. Well, can, amongst our friends, in terms of gambling and games, you know, what what do you guys, you know, typically play on a Sunday or um, you know, what type of games do we play just in a normal group? So what are some of our favorite favorite betting games? Wolf. Wolf's, Wolf's <laughs> always fun. Yeah, Wolf's, Wolf's always my fun. favorite. And what is Wolf? So basically, if I'm the Wolf, you have three other players. You're numbered one, two, three, four. You have to go in that order. So if if I'm the number one player, I tee off. After I hit my shot, I can choose to go Wolf, and that triples the bet. And or doubles the bet. Sorry, lone wolf triples the bet. Well, the thing that's nice about wolf is you can make whatever rules you want. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of different rules. There's a lot of different games. I mean, the most yeah. common yeah. game of wolf is if you're playing a fivesome. Yeah, yeah. you know that way you, well, a team always has. Yeah, yeah. You uh, take you take two people against three. Yeah, or yeah. Yeah. one versus four. I mean, yeah. you start yeah. howling. I mean, <laughs> you don't know. And heaven forbid you go blind wolf. Mm-hmm. Blind wolf is uh you. You're basically playing by yourself before you even hit your tee shot. You better have a set of cojones. I say like, you're you're confident you're going to strike one <laughs> yeah. on that tee box. I say wolf's a very fun fun format, and it's one of my favorites because mm-hmm. every hole is a match within itself. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So I mean, and that's the thing is I think that when you play just a standardized Nassau or something like that, you're still competing the entire round. So if you have a bad hole, it's going to reflect on the next one or something like that. Wolf, it's like, no, like that hole's done with. Yeah. This Here's is what one. we're doing. Yeah. And and the fun thing about Wolf, I've played it a bunch of different ways. You can format the points however you want. Yeah. The standardized is like. A you dollar know, point. I'd, I said, that can get rough. <laughs> that, <there>. can, that, <laughs> that can get out of hand quick. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> no, but you're exactly right. And if your only point you can get on that hole is if you win the hole, that's great. But, like, let's throw – I mean, for example, Wolf Hammer became really popular the mm. past few years, but it's essentially Wolf within itself but with trash. I call it trash. Some people call it dots or whatever. But That's trash, what I always enjoy playing trash, dots. Yeah. Trash is uh, a sandy, sandy, a point for a sandy, a point for closest to the hole, a point for uh, a flag, which is essentially if you make a putt uh, longer than the length of the flag – so you, um, you can you can make you can get points a, or a trash point, or dots for you can anybody. get a point for you know longest drive like you, you can you make just a point for it. making making par and never touching the fairway and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like, and geez. and that's where let's just say you're playing a dollar a point. Yeah, with Wolf and things like that, to where you know you can essentially hammer in the middle of the fairway, which automatically devils everything. So now that two dollars and you do all this, it can get out of hand yeah. quick. <laughs> and and that's the thing. And I. As you guys can see, this say, is this if is you're my not kind careful of, with this that, is my kind well, of golf. With that game, you might need a sports like a, a sports bookie to uh, keep track. I will never pets. forget. <laughs> Call loan officer <laughs> number three fairway. <laughs> no, I was assistant pro or first assistant in Palm Desert. 
I lost my entire paycheck because I played a game of wolf <laughs> with some members. Ouch. And I was on the receiving end of a yeah. bad yeah. beatdown. Eating a lot of ramen noodle that week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Good times, though. I'll say some other. I always enjoyed playing Vegas. Yes. I, I think it's called different things as well, too. But Vegas is where you have um, you, basically your, your score is the points. Mm-hmm. And so if you if you, if partners make two pars, let's say it's a par four, they're forty four. Their team score is forty four, and the other team makes a bogey. They make a par and bogey. Their team score is forty five. Forty four so wins. You forty four wins. You you scored a point. But where it gets interesting, why it's <laughs> called Vegas, is where let's say the one team scores a birdie, and now their team score is thirty four. Well, now they can flip the other team score, and they had a fifty four. So they just scored twenty points. Yep. <laughs> And you AKA, yeah. that that's uh, I've it's played a that gambling, a few, it's that, a gambling game. That's you know, for sure. that's one where you're essentially playing every hole hoping you flip. Yeah, yeah. because you're either going to be down a ton, yeah. or up just a little, and like I was, I say we played it for ten cents a point one time and won twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna. I, I big, enjoyed poker golf. I say you know, we did a segment on that. But yeah, that stuff like that's always fun where you just go out and kind of do like a red tea challenge or anything yeah. like that. Um, if you need somebody to draw a two in poker golf, I'm your guy. I was going nice. to say, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm more into like actual like. like Yeah, a game. Yeah, playing standard. So game that we played a bunch in Florida, a different place called diff, um, is Twist. We called it Twist um, or Umbrella, as you hear people say it, but. Um, it's a four, it's a foursomes game. So, uh, two V two, your partner's your partner throughout the entire match. They're essentially six points per hole. Um, and, uh, when you tee off on the first hole, no one really has honors. So, um, you can get a point for, uh, close to the pin, a point for a birdie, and then two points for, uh, total team score. Um, and then two points for lowest score on the hole. Right. So if you play a dollar a point, this game can get out of hand quick. And where it comes twist is after, so let's say after the first hole, my team makes five points. Me and Kyle make five points, right? So we tee off first on the next hole. If we both hit it in a position where we're not in a great position, y'all can say twist. Now that's worth double, mm. right? Now let's just go ahead and go as if we go to the next hole, Kyle and I lose, you guys get all six that automatically doubles the bet again, right? So, bam, y'all just won 48 points on one hole. Yeah, yeah, take it. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then the cool thing is, too, we, we we joke about it, and you can say twist when pissed. So, like... You twist anytime. Anytime, yeah. right? But um, it's a super fun game just because there's so, there's so many little bets within itself, right, for the closest to the hole, birdie trying to cut things like that Mm -hmm. that like i like games like that to where if you even if you're just slightly out out of the hole you can still pick up a point somehow or some way yeah right and then and and stuff like that i would i would definitely highly recommend normal golfers to go out and try it with your buddies because you realize how much more fun you'll have and a lot of times too when you know you're only competing on that hole against those people you're going to play a little bit better you're going to play differently yeah you're going to play differently because now you're like holy cow i'm trying i noticed the the two guys we're playing against they're not close to flag let's see if we can really dial in and get that point but i say one i like for if you don't have a foursome a threesome game is nine point yeah, nine, nine points, points always fine. a good good game. Yeah. I feel like I've played that before. Have oh, I yeah. Again? So each hole is worth nine points. Yeah. If all three of you tie, you each get three points. Okay. You know, if, uh, if, One, you, make, if you make birdie and win the hole, it's five. And the well, other two tie, it's two and two. Yeah. yeah. You know, it just you, has to add up to nine. It just has yeah. to add up to nine okay. holes. Yeah. And then whoever scores most points at the end of the, you know, the round wins. I always like to play nine point, And if you win by more than two shots, you get all nine points. Yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> I'm saying a lot of times when we do that, we'll have uh, whoever's losing or whoever's got the least points after what, 15, 15 holes? After 15. So 16, They get 17. to decide how many points the last the whole, three holes are worth. <laughs> obviously, multiples of nine. Yep. <laughs> so, so it can get interesting there, you know. <laughs> as you can see, I like I like the high risk games. Yeah, high risk, high reward. <laughs> high risk, high reward. I, I never try to go crazy, but, you know, if we pull a quick hundred out of someone's wallet, I'm happy. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I also, I think hundreds like that kind of, I mean, I, you guys say like, I'm, I've never grew up. I mean, gambling's not a big thing and I'm, I'm, I don't really gamble on anything other than when we play these on course games. Yeah. But like probably what's your max bet? What's the max you guys would probably gamble on the golf course? Probably those glizzies. <laughs> <laughs> Food. Lunch uh, is always the easy yeah. one. Losers by lunch. Except for stymies. Stymies, uh, when we used to play stymies at Cape Fear Seafood, I mean, first time I ever went, I didn't know what I bet, and I lost $65 <laughs> in one putt. Yeah, I wouldn't because do that. Because of how many yeah. people that we had. But I would say probably $25. $25. Bucks. Yeah. It would depend on who I'm playing, <laughs> I would say, but probably 100 bucks or so around there is what I would what I feel comfortable with. Losing. What do you think? What, what, is, what is your... What's what's how much money would you put on the table no matter what? Depends if my wife is watching this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never good answer, at Daryl. Good answer. <laughs> I don't give at all. Yeah, we didn't, we played for fun. Average, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's mostly for fun. It's a gentleman's bet of a dollar. Yeah, mostly I'd say probably close to Caleb. You know, max on average I'm going to do a hundred bucks, but most of the time whenever I'm playing with buddies, it's twenty bucks. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It's. Because I don't want, you know, one, if it's my friends, I don't want to take advantage of them. Well, you don't want to hurt a friendship yeah. either. <laughs> no. Beating no. somebody bad. And that's but, why, yeah. that's why for me, that's why I'm saying the most comfortable I would ever, I, I'm fine either losing or making is a hundred bucks. I yeah. think that is a friendly wager. I always say it all the time. It's really bad reasoning, but I've spent a hundred dollars on a lot of dumber things. But, <laughs> <laughs> but well. um, but shoot, you go out to dinner now and it's a hundred bucks. I saw that. Don't I'm take long. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point exactly. Or inflation. Pairs of golf pants. Now. Inflation. Our bets got to go up. You golf know? pants, 150 <laughs> bucks. But I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, Gator needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah. You know, but who am I playing <laughs> with? All right. We'll just do a little $20 bet. Yeah. Or like this weekend, we bet lunch. If we are actually playing for money, those presses would have got expensive. Yeah. Well, we, uh, I was going to say, you know, some standard. I, I still enjoy just a, we Nassau. talked about like some crazy betting games you can play. I still like just a standard, just a two versus two, do an overall match, and you can do, you can either do two down autos or one down autos. You should always do, there needs to be a press. There's, yeah. there's an option for a press there. Now, I prefer to do two down autos because if you do one down autos, it can get messy in a hurry. Next thing you because know, you're every time track of now, six for some bets. of our listeners, they might not know what that means. Well, I'll, I'll try to explain <laughs> it. Um, but if you're with one down autos, if you ain't careful, you might have 12 bets at the end of the round going. You're like, who won? That's, I don't my, know. Kind of, that's my kind of <laughs> yeah. <game>. scorecard. That's <laughs> a mess. <laughs> so, what two down? Well, what a press is, is a press is where you are starting a new bet or a second bet. So, in two down autos, if one team goes two up, it's an automatic press. You have no option whether you can do it or not. You have to press. So now you've you still continue the original bet and you've started a new one from that point forward. Now if you if that team if a team gets two up on that press, well, there's another automatic press. Now you got a third bet going and it just continues the cycle that way. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and you can obviously you can whatever your standard bet is, it can be a five dollar match or a twenty dollar match, but whatever. Say so how does uh how does Nikki and Miles feel about some two down autos? I was grinding. We were grinding. We were we were you know, that's what happens when you go against a lab putter. I, I was guess. gonna say you I probably mean, won't call to pick out a different putter to put. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then I mean if if Caleb's putting for birdie, we're fine. It's the twenty <laughs> footers for par that are that uh, it's just wearing me out. Uh, yeah, mean, those uh, those par putts are just as important as the birdie putts because you make whatever a, you're doing on those par putts, <laughs> you need to learn how to mentally lock in. Because if you make that par putt, that's a momentum saver. You know, oh my you gosh. grind out that par and have that hole that another team well, thought they were going to win. Mentally affected. Oh yeah, it, it, <laughs> Nikki was uh, Nikki was reeling. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I mean, I, there ain't I nothing it. you can do. All I right, mean, so since we brought up putters, I had a thought. This is going to be a little bit wild one. Okay. okay. So listen to this. As I was thinking about the other day, Phil Mickelson's always putted with that old blade style putter, the Wilson 8802, but like a variant of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's been using the Odyssey version of it now for <laughs> his entire career. Yeah. Okay. What if Mickelson had putted with any other putter during his career? I think he could have won more times than Tiger. I mean, it's a big statement, right? Phil could have won more than Tiger. If he'd put it with a different putter. 
Mm. You think it was his putter that held him back? Well, and the reason why I got to think about this is I was watching that live um, team championship and his match with Dustin Johnson. It was on, I think, hole 16. He had like a six-foot birdie putt to keep the match going. And he hit the putt, I mean, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch to the toe of the putter. And you could see the blade open up and the, and the putt squirt to the right, and he lifted out on the right side of the hole. Now, if he had putted with a more stable putter, like a lab or basically anything besides a blade, he could have struck that putt in the same spot, and it might have stayed on line and made the putt. So that was just one example. But how many times – and then you start thinking back like Shinnecock in I think it was 04 when Ratif Goosen won. think about him. He missed a bunch a of short – for missing a lot of short, short putts. Short putts. Yeah. You know, how, if, he, if he makes a couple of those, how many more tournaments does he win? Well, he's using the least forgiving putter that's ever been made. Exactly. Got <laughs> yeah. Between 85 and 90 degrees of toe hang. And then he kind of jabs at it. Yeah. And now he's got this arm lock variant. Of, I say he's tried a bunch of things. Yeah. Because he used that Versa number nine for a long time. And then he went back to this 2001 Odyssey Mill PM the, head. The Versa number nine, even though it's a little bigger head, is it's basically the same, same, same thing. thing. There's, There's a, a, lot of, a lot of mass out on that toe. And yeah. that heel is going to be light. So it's just going to be flippy. flippy. I say, uh, like, um, Kyle, you're the Sam Putt Lab guy, right? So on a, on a 10 foot putt, if you hit the ball, how far out on the toe does it take to make the face twist enough to miss the 10-foot putt? Um, if it's a hill-shafted putter, realistically, two dimples at max. Yeah, so how how big is two dimples? <laughs> not very big. Right? I mean, I was going to say, what, it's four not millimeters? Much. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's... And we never really think about hitting a putter solid, like in the center of the club face. But, I mean, it's important. So, I don't know. It was something I was watching. And actually, the geometric center is more towards the heel of the putter than it is the toe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But most people miss on the toe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, moral of the story, Caleb. Uh, uh, listen, hey, well, I, I, I'm working my way toward it because, <laughs> and I know this from, from experience because I putted with one of those putters for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and I gradually, I'm, I used to putt with a Scotty Cameron Napa, and I loved it. I mean, when I was playing golf six days a week, I made everything. I felt like I made everything I looked at. And then I uh, started playing less, you know, working more, playing less. I uh, switched to a Newport 2. Wow. And then all of a sudden, that was like exponentially more forgiving. I was like, man, I'm making putts I used to miss because now I've got some forgiveness. And now now i got a mallet. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're about to go and even, now we're about to go even further. Even further so. <laughs> I was like, watching Kyle put with a lab, I probably won't need one of those now. You know what? Uh, <clears throat> It's tough when you're two down through three because yeah. a guy's making twenty for hard to, hard to come back from dead that. center. I mean, but what can you do? What can you do? Yeah. At least I would say it's the first time I've seen a lab putter out on the golf course, and it's one of those things where we were joking about you know like having a mental handicap, but it's just your confidence. Like I think that ultimately that's what that putter did for you. Mm-hmm. Your confidence went through the roof. Oh, I, so I, now I made, you realize. I made the comment you know, uh, while we were playing that as soon as he set up to us, like I think he's he, he's going to make thing. it because he, he's, he's not worried about anything. he's not worried about anything. He was just committed to hitting his target. So yeah. especially on that. And again, this is four. a <laughs> we are not getting paid by Lab Golf. No, <laughs> at yeah, all. Say Kyle just put it good all. with it. <laughs> Kyle yeah. just put it good with it. And well, and I would say those were the hardest screens we've played on. Uh, we played at Duplin Country Club. Those have been the hardest screens I mean, to put. I've played on in a long time. Yeah, sign me up for those greens every day. Where'd you guys play? Duplin Country Club. It was fun. I mean, there was small little postage stamp greens, lots of undulation, and uh, and they were pretty quick, and some and some testy pin placement. So I mean, it made it made it fun. I mean, there's one par three we didn't. Uh, I hit a good shot in there, about what 15 feet. The par three where um, the roller coaster ramp. Mm-hmm. No, 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 not the roller coaster ramp up. The one with the the par three we had to cross a bridge. Oh, to get to <laughs> yeah, that pin placement. I hit it like 15 feet past the hole. I was 30 feet past the hole. Yeah, and uh, watched him put it off the green. I had no chance. I had no chance. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't even close. My partner over there even says, "What was that?" Yeah. And I was like, "What do you mean? I have nothing here." <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I, I mean, I'm kind of looking at the putt, and I'm like, "All right, well, you know, it's probably realistically a foot of break, but it's super fast. It's a lot of slope downhill. If I get this to the hole, it's 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 off the green down there with Nikki. I might put it into the water if I ain't careful." I'm gonna go higher. I need to go. Higher. I kept going higher and higher until I basically putted it almost my back to the hole. 
and left it, you know, eight Six, feet short. Eight feet short. <laughs> and then the next one hits the center of the cup. So like I said, whatever he's doing on par putts, he needs yeah. you know, to channel a little bit of that. I said may maybe been one of the best two putts I've ever had. Because that, that second putt, if it hadn't touched the cup, as slow as it was rolling, would have been a chip for the next shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. No, they fun. were that fast, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Downhill, they were pretty much yeah. impossible. And then yeah. the roller coaster ramp pole. Like Grandfather Mountain? The thing about the impossible? Lo- yes. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. 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 Wow. Pretty, oh, yeah. pretty close to that. And, I mean, they're not as fast, but they were, yeah. Some tough pin placement. Quarter of the size. Yeah. 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 I mean, this yeah. table might be as big as some of those greens out there. Yeah. Some of the spots. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it was fun. That's what makes it fun is I always like that when you don't have to stress about. Tee to green, and then you get up to the green. You're like, man, I just hit it to ten feet, and you're like, oh. I'll dear. say it was more oh, fun, dear lord, putting those greens being up than it would have been putting them. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the smiles? This is I missed a lot while this I was is out. Slander. <laughs> this is slander. I mean, I didn't say anything bad. I, about I mean, you. seventeen was a perfect example of my day, though. I had that so was. many lift out. Lift out. <laughs> The U turn. That ball looked got up, to the hole and just was like, psych. That ball got to the hole and got scared. Yes. Time, yes. To, time to switch. We golf up in the mountains. We played Sherwood Forest um, Par 3 course. Wow. Heck yeah. Yeah. Was, I uh, love me a good Par 3. Was Robin Hood there? Their, <laughs> their, their logo is actually like a Robin Hood hat. I see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. We'll hop into our, uh, what, Club our garage review. segment again. Gear yeah. review. Gear review. <laughs> Can we, can we show this? I guess so, since it's on there. So. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I was> just... <laughs> Looks good. It's a Mizuno golf club. It's hard to go wrong. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, we're, so we're looking forward to getting the fitting tools in and starting to fit for these, right? Yeah, we're going to actually have them early in December. Yeah. I, I do. I will say that this shaping is way better looking than the 223, uh, the 22 line that was just recently out. Yeah. Like, I like how... So if you were in like the current like the two two instead of the two four, well I like series. how like they so kind of round two forty one two forty three two forty five. Is yeah. that how they're gonna do it? Yeah. So like, yeah. well obviously these are the two four five, so it's the two two five replacement replacement newer model. Yeah. I like how it's that traditional rounded Mizuno muscle back shape. Yeah. So like the current two two five is almost very seven ninety ish. It's very flat and. Mm. I would say clean, a clean way, but this one looks more for for it not being a blade. It looks more like a muscle back. Yeah, I like um, I like the shaping in the toe of that kind of muscle area. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the old t- uh, TN eighty sevens or like the uh, MB fourteen. Has it two two ones, two two threes, and two two fives really have already been out for two years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're already sold out for oh, the most part. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah you can't fit for them anymore. Yeah. But holy cow. Time flies when you're having fun, Nikki. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind couple of years. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like those irons. I mean, I was like, dang, they're already coming out newer ones. We just got this. And it's like, no, we've had them for a long time. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> now, there's some wedge stamping. That's some wedge stamping right there. That had to be laser etched. It's got to yes, be. Yeah. it's got to be. That's pretty cool, though. Where's, uh, where's Splinter at, though? <laughs> <laughs> did a good job with the paint, I don't Phil. know who yeah. did it, but... Nice job. Yeah. They, all, uh, they seriously love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. If they Who put doesn't? That on that. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But. <laughs> would y'all game something like this? No. You wouldn't? That Absolutely. Would sit, that would sit in my house. I think that would be a cool little, when someone walks in and sees the wedge, like, yeah. well, look at that. Well, we got a bunch of new wedge, we got a bunch of new stamps just in. I just know. stamped mine. Yeah. Well, Caleb stamped my wedges. I so said, we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. We're messing with it. I say if this were, I say mine look good. It's hard. I can't tell from this photo, but if this is a a raw SM9, I'd game it. Does that change the performance at all? Not really, <laughs> but it does change the way it looks. Someone's gonna ask that question. Yeah. So the I think that's like, done pretty I, well. Like especially like I say on a raw wedge, it, when it browns in, that would look it would look cool. He did a good job with the nunchuck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of detail there. That's yeah. what I'm I saying. Yeah, like yeah. it's that. Yeah, it's definitely laser etched. But yeah. Ooh, 14s. I mean, they're, uh, aren't these Japan forged? I yeah. say it's like a, kind of like a Mira like a Mira. ish yeah. type of brand. Because they've I mean, always had those RM wedges on tour, but they've mm-hmm. never really done anything. It's kind of like a Scratch Golf. It's just one of those like small cult yeah. following companies. I mean, what do you guys think about those direct to consumer companies like that? If you know your specs, and you <laughs> got a shaft that you've been playing for a while and performs well with you then it could work well with something like this it's a very expensive gamble yeah it's yes. yeah, yeah. a very expensive gamble if you don't like them 
<laughs> that's, I mean, I think they're great looking clubs. So many, like some of these companies that are direct to consumer, very like bougie like that are great. But at the same time, like if I'm playing golf, I'm playing for performance. How do you know I, if it I would, ne- I would never spend money on that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna buy this because it looks fantastic. Yeah. I'm never gonna spend money because I, I there's no possible way to trust the R and D. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what's kind of interesting about like Mike Taylor Artisan Golf is in order to get wedges or to get a set of irons, you have from to, him, you have to go to Texas and watch. The, they physically watch you hit, grind the shot. I mean, they yeah. that's polar opposite of yep. what I. Like, yes, that's... I, that I makes agree. sense that when makes you're sense. spending this kind of money. Yeah. But just ordering it online based off of a price... But now, these aren't necessarily direct-to-consumer either. I know. I, mean, I know they have a fitting system, yeah. but... Just a small niche market. Mm-hmm. I get some... Good-looking. Good looking I, get, I get some euros. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I should have bought at Sherwood Forest. They had an original Kushnet bullseye, and I was thinking about it. It was 40 bucks. Oh. And I was going to buy it. Yeah. Just you know how we were talking about spending money on dumb things? <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> That's why I didn't spend it. But I would have this in a retro bag for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good so this would be putter. a good putter for a retro bag. It looks good. I'll say y'all play golf a lot longer than me. So like I'm don't I don't know the craze behind any of this. I'm the typical millennial golfer. <laughs> yeah, I, for sure. <laughs> when you get mad and putt bad, you just start putting left handed. I say it's just just a standard putter. You know what I mean? Like it's Especially from forty years ago, if you thought putter, this was the first thing. I say Cameron did a good job doing it, but I mean, is this like the sweet spot, like there? Basically, yeah, yeah. like right on the shaft. Right in the shaft. Hmm. I mean, it's basically a center shafted blade. Oh my! Yeah, those are beautiful. What I can't get over is how good that club scrub looks. That's a really good looking golf bag. I'm just not, I can't do the ferrules. Like, <laughs> cool color, but not the two inch long ferrules. You know what's funny enough? Like, on wedges, they look perfect. I like, say, you yeah, can't yeah. tell. It, and I think it's because the line goes, like, just, like, upright enough that. Well, and, and wedges have longer hosels as well, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, it's more proportionally balanced out. But I say, <clears throat> knowing who built these clubs, I think the build's really good. I like the, <laughs> I like the mirror wedges. I like the ferrules and, and, and the shafts here. But knowing whose wedges they are, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say those are probably the two best two best clubs in his bag yeah. right now. But they, uh, you know, that looks like a guy that 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 rebuilt his clubs just to put a ferro on. You know, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they look good. Perfect for perfect for fall. Yeah, I'm interested to see Very what is what, what what winter ferrules come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, changing your ferrules for seasons. No, I'm I'm all about it. I'm all about it. <clears throat> that thing looks fast. I say that looks like it could win a race by thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so how much did he win by this weekend? Fifteen. Yeah, it's fifteen. Yeah, fifteen seconds. Yeah, so. but let's we forget that he made up an entire pit stop before the red flag. <laughs> Here's where I'm gonna hate on Taylor Made. What do you guys notice about this picture? So Taylor Made and Red Bull did a collab release two weeks ago. Right. What do you guys notice about that putter? What's that? It's the old one. It's the old one. Why would you release a limited, like, one-off putter, and it's not even... They just came out with a new spider. Yeah. Well, they probably tell you they've had this in the works for for a while or whatever, you know. But, no, it looks cool. I bought a t-shirt. I I like like the Red Bull paint scheme. Yeah. I'd I'd play it. I bought... Yeah, I think. It might help. It might. (laughs) I don't know. It's still still toe hang, though, so it might not be the right one. I, I was again another thing because that putter cover was a hundred bucks. That's where I was like, do I order that cover or not? I'm a Red Bull fan, so I was like, this putter cover sweet. It'll fit my putter. No, I'll just stick with a t-shirt. <laughs> no, I think it was su- it's super cool how Taylor made has been doing some things like this. I mean, yeah. Formula One globally is. I say the, the color scheme huge. for the driver on this this line looked really good. I, I think the golf bags looked the best. Yeah, the golf bag looked good too. The golf bag sold out in like a minute, and it was like six hundred, seven hundred bucks. I mean, wow. like that that Red Bull livery, I think looks looks good kind of in general. So, mm. just wait until it gets a Ford logo on it. Yeah, mm. <laughs> it'll get a, it'll get a dent when it makes contact with the ball. <laughs> wow. 
I'll, I'm still looking for a name for this uh, segment. So if you want to uh, throw us some suggestions and uh, a way to rank these photos, we'd be more than happy to get you guys' opinions. And, uh, you know, that's what we got for you this week. Uh, today's Halloween, so happy Halloween to everybody, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yep. Yep.